discuss. Okay, today we are going to do a lecture on uh, money supply. Last week we have done the money demand, the money demand theories. So today we are going to do the supply theories, money supply theories. Okay, and for this lecture, you will see that we have two school of thoughts. Two school of thoughts. We have the endogenous money supply school of thought, and then we have the exogenous money supply school of thought. So we have two two people, different groups of people arguing where does the money come from? Does it come from the external source or from the internally, inherently created from the economy? So that's endogenous. So is it exogenous, external, or endogenous internally? Okay? So um, this lecture is important because this uh, uh, affect your assignment. It's uh, majority of your assignment is based on today's lecture. So that's why it's very important. Okay. So money supply and money creation. So we'll see in this lecture we'll see how the money is created in the in the economy, in the system. Okay? So money supply and money creation. Alright. First of all, you have narrow measure and broad measure. Narrow measure of the money means that you have uh, notes and coins, which means the definition of money is just uh, simply notes and coins. And then you have a broader definition of money. So there are altogether four categories here. So you have money based, M1, M3, and broad money. Now, the money base is the smallest category whereby this refers to the notes and coins put with the RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia. In Malaysia will be our Bank Negara. In Australia will be Reserve Bank of Australia. Okay, RBA. So I repeat, money base is the smallest category whereby it's referring to the notes and coins kept with the um, central bank. Okay, so that's the keyword is central bank uh, for money base. Then M1 refers to the notes and coins. Okay, for notes and coins and uh, from the public. So me and you, all the public, and then we have all the notes and coins we deposit into the bank. Okay, commercial bank. Then we have M3. M3 refers to the broader definition. Now, it say it will be M1 plus all ADI deposits. So what does ADI stand for? ADI is actually a short uh, term, uh, represent authorized deposit taking institution. So it means that it is licensed money collector. That means you must have the license from the central bank to collect money from the public. Understand? So if you're talking about money game, that they have no license and then they want to collect your money from your pocket, these are illegal, not authorized. So authorized ADI means that they are the authorized money money depositor. That means you can deposit money in this institution. They are legalized, they have the license from the central bank. Okay? So M3 refers to the M1 plus uh, money deposit, including the FD, fixed deposit, and also the traveler's check, and then other things, which is a broader definition of money. So as you are moving from money base to M1 to M3, and then to broad money, you are actually looking at smaller definition than bigger than bigger. Now, if you have seen your other source, you will see M2. M2 is the definition is between M1 and M3. So, for the Google definition, the M2 definition is the fixed deposit, uh, is below 100k. And the M3 is bigger, it's those FD bigger than 100k. So, you see M2 and M3, the difference is more or less the same, it's just that the, the, it includes more um, FDs. Or bigger definition, broader definition. Okay? 
So broad learning is M3 plus uh, other short-term liquid uh, financial intermediaries. So, so the broad money is even bigger. So basically, broad money will include all kinds of uh, forms of money in the forms of uh, OD facilities, in the forms of uh, uh, fixed deposits, in the forms of uh, different category um, letter of uh, uh, certificate. So LC and all this, which is the broader definition that includes uh, credit terms as well, loans, those loans as well. So you have a, a, a narrow definition, then all the way to a broader definition. Okay. So I repeat, money base refers to the money in the central bank, whereas broad money will be the money in the system. In the, either in the banks, commercial banks, or in the hands of the consumer in the system itself. Okay, so you have broad money and the uh, uh, money base, which is too extreme. And M1, M2, M3 are in the middle. Okay, so this is the definition of the money. So you look at the Australian money supply here. You see that the money base is the smallest uh, money base. M1 is the smallest, okay? Because M1 are physical notes and coins. And then money base is bigger than the M1. And then entry is, of course, is bigger. And the broad money is the biggest, okay? Because um, when you're talking about notes and coins, uh, it is all those physical quantities, that is, those that you can touch. That you can see, you can touch the, the notes and the points. Where else, if we are looking at the FD and all those things, do you see your money in the FD form? It's in the certificate form, right? The fixed deposit is the bigger, it's not like notes and coins. You get what I mean? So, therefore, um, M1 is the most basic kind of uh, notes and coins. It's a very de um, narrow definition. Okay? So next, we are going to talk about exogenous money creation, or we call it the Fractional Reserve Banking, FRB system. Okay, fractional Reserve Banking. So what this exogenous money supply, by definition, is the keyword is a fraction of the reserve. That means when you as a depositor, a household, right, you deposit the money in the bank, Okay, you deposit the money in the bank, the bank will keep a reserve, will keep aside a reserve. That this reserve right is for you to withdraw. And then the other part of it, the balance, you will use that money to lend out to other people, to a firm or to another household. Bill. So what here what it means here is that a person deposit the money in the bank and the bank will keep aside a certain amount of money, we call it the reserve, a fraction of the reserve, and then the balance of the reserve, he will lend out. Okay, and this amount of money, when he lend out, he will lend out to another person. So when another person, he got this amount of money, right, he will deposit into another bank. So another bank, he got the deposit, and then he will set aside a certain amount of reserve, and then the balance, he will lend out again. So this process will continue and continue until the balance is getting smaller and smaller. So this is what we call the money creation. Money is created in this sense. For example, you put 1,000 into the bank. The bank, will the bank keep all the 1,000 and waiting for you to withdraw? No, it will not. For example, you put 1 million, because 1,000 may be too little. For example, you put 1 million. Do you think the bank will keep 1 million aside and then waiting for you to withdraw that 1 million? Or he will keep aside maybe 100k. Okay, he will keep aside 100k and then another 900k he will lend out. He will use your money to do business. He will lend to other people so that he can earn interest. Remember, how does the bank make money? The bank make money from extending the loans. So when he extends the loans, he can charge the people interest. And then use that interest to pay you as a depositor. 
So do you know how much is your FD right now? 2.5, because we our bank account just lower our interest rate. So it's about 2.5. Then, if let's say you want to buy a house, how much is the mortgage rate? Probably about 4 5%. So do you see the bank make money out of it? So the bank will charge the loan 5%, and then he will give you 2.5%. So how much money the bank makes? Another 2.5%. So that's how the bank make money. So he will not let your money that deposit in the bank go idle. He will sure make money out of it. So he will have to lend out. So when he lend out, he make money. Okay? So this is how it is work. So in order to, um, so the definition for the re um, reserve is you have the required reserve. So this required reserve is uh, set by the central bank, whereby you will instruct all the banks, you will set aside a certain amount of money for the people to withdraw. So this is the required reserve ratio is set by the central bank. Now for Australia, the required reserve ratio is zero. You do not have. And in uh, New Zealand, also zero. Sweden, also zero. In US, it's 10%. The standard required reserve ratio for US is 10%. For Malaysia, it's 3%. Okay? So required reserves. Then you have uh, excess reserves. So excess reserves meaning that yeah, beside this uh, amount, let's say US bank, 10% set aside as a reserve ratio for, for the people to withdraw. And then sometimes the bank would want to have extra reserves also for his own use. Another put aside, excess reserve. Then only the balance will be for a loan. Okay? So therefore you have the uh, reserve, required reserve set by the bank at Dara. Then you have the excess reserve. Excess reserve is for the bank himself, he wants to set aside for his own personal other use. And then, emergency or whatever, then he will loan out the balance, okay? So, total reserves is the whole thing here, okay? Total reserve is equal to your required reserve plus your excess reserve, okay? And total reserve is also the uh, fraction of a bank's total deposit that are held in reserve. So therefore, the bank, let's say, uh, people deposit $1,000. Um, so 10% set aside for the bank, the guard required reserve, and then you maybe have another 5% for the excess reserve. And then the, the rest you can lend out. Okay? So that reserve will be your bank, the guard reserve, and the excess reserve. This one is uh, for you to loan out. So it's not under the reserve. Okay? Only this one is reserved. The one that you're going to loan out is not under reserve because you're going to give out the money, you're going to lend out the money in the, in the end. Okay? Okay. So money supply is equal to currency plus the demand deposit. Demand deposit will be your FD and all those OD facilities. OD means overdraft facilities. Huh? Sometimes when you go to the bank, you say, oh, I want to uh, withdraw more. I have uh, already 1,000 there, but maybe I want to apply for overdraft facilities. Ah, then the bank, okay, I will let you uh, withdraw more, like uh, 1,000 ringgit more. So then you can withdraw, you can use up to 2,000 ringgit. 1,000 is your own money, and then 1,000 is borrowing money from the bank. It's called the OD facilities. Okay? So this D uh, is called the, those are the demand deposit. It means uh, whenever um, you need the money, the bank will give you that type of money. Currency will be the notes and coins. Okay. So money creation. So now we're going to demonstrate four scenarios in order to explain this exogenous money supply, how it is being created. Your book uh, illustrate four scenarios. So we're going to go through each of the four scenarios, and then we're going to um, understand the, the sequence. Right, how it is being involved. So assumption is that we have 1,000 currency in the system and then all currency adds up in the bank. There's no linkages, no, no tax, no taxes, no imports or no, no linkages, alright? So scenario one. Scenario one, um, imagine you do not have any bank. 
has no bank in the society, no bank. So your $1,000 in your hand is equal to the money supply, okay? Because there is no bank, so you do not deposit. So therefore, the deposit is equal to zero because you do not deposit into the bank. So the deposit, D is the deposit, uh, D is equal to zero. The money supply and the currency is 1000 Money supply is equal to your currency. The deposit is zero because you do not deposit into the bank. Okay? So this is the first scenario. Maybe I write on the board. So scenario one. No bank. So Profit equal to zero, and then your money supply is equal to your currency is equal to one thousand. Okay, so scenario two. Okay, so for scenario two, now we assume that the bank will keep aside one hundred percent of your money into the the system as a reserve that waiting for you to withdraw. So if you put 1,000, right, the bank will keep 1,000 for you to withdraw, 100% as a reserve. So what will happen? What happened to the deposit? What happened to the uh, money supply? What happened to the currency? Okay. So the, the currency is equal to 1,000, and then the money supply is equal to 1,000. Okay, so that means whatever is in the system now, right? So, deposit is equal to zero because you do not create money at this moment. Your money supply is uh, is uh, one thousand, and then your currency is also equal to one thousand. Okay, because the bank keep aside all the money for you to withdraw. So he didn't make an effort to loan out any uh, any any money. He didn't try to make profit from your deposit. So he, he just put everything that waiting for you to withdraw. He didn't make any money now. You get what I mean? He didn't loan out anything. Just one hundred percent that. Okay. So money is money created here? No, no money created. Understand? Because the bank keeps aside all the hundred percent as a reserve. So there's no money created. Money is only created when you keep aside less than whatever you you uh, consider. Maybe you keep even if you keep aside fifty percent, the other fifty percent you can still create loan, and which is creation of money. As long as you can create loan, uh, that's a creation of money then. Okay, okay. So, so this is what happened. Okay. Let's wait. Uh, sorry. The, oh. Uh, the deposit is equal to 1,000, sorry here. Yeah. The deposit is 1,000, then the, oh, the notes and coins in your hand becomes zero because now you put everything into the bank now, okay? So now you put your money into the bank, so you deposit to the bank. So the notes and coins in your hand is zero, and then so your demand deposit is equal to uh, money supply. Understand? You know why the C is equal to zero? Because the money on your hand, Zero, you put in the bank already. So then this one becomes 1,000. Okay, deposit becomes 1,000, right? So any money created? No, no money created. Now, the third scenario. Three, whereby the bank will have a reserve ratio of how many percent? 20 percent. So now the bank has a reserve ratio of 20 percent. Okay, have a reserve ratio of 20 percent and then so this is the bank, this is the uh, reserve ratio, we call it the RR. RR. So this is the deposit, 1,000. How much is the reserve here? Would be 200, right? 200. 
So how much you can lend out? Okay, so you can loan out 800 loans here. Okay, 800. So you got 1,000. Okay, so over here, do you see the money supply has increased? Because this loan is not going to sit here. It will have to loan out. When it loan out to another person, the person will deposit into the second bank. So this is the first bank. Then he will deposit into the second bank. So the second bank will have a deposit of 800 there. Okay, this person he loan out to person B. And person B will deposit into another bank. So he will deposit into the, the, his own bank, which is not the same, may not be the same, so his own bank. And then that second bank will take the deposit and then he do what? Will he take the deposit and do nothing? No, he will set aside how much? 20%, okay? So he will set aside 20%. So the reserve is 20% of uh, 800 is how much? 160, right? Okay, 160, and then he will loan out how much? 640, okay, 640. Okay, so do you see that the money supply is increased again and again. First, the money supply was 1,000. Then, because of this loan increase, the money supply become 1,800. The second round here, 1,800 because of this one increase. Then the third round will be 1,800 plus 640 become that figure. You have to press your calculator. You get it? So that means the money supply each round is increasing, but the additional loan, because you need to set aside, right? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So in the end, I use the bigger zero, but in the end, this whole thing is called the money creation. Okay? So this whole thing is called the money creation. So the money is created out of the people's deposit. Out of the people's deposit. So that's a fractional reserve banking system the bank creates money. So we continue. So this is what I mentioned here. 160, the second bank, huh? 160 and then the uh, 640. Okay, so that will illustrate. So then the third bank, you put 640 and then you further divide it. Okay, so all these are, you use your calculator, 640 times 20%, is it 128? Yes. Then the 80% of that 640 should be 512. Okay, so how much money is created? It will be 1000 plus 800 plus 640 plus 512. You got it? And then this process will continue until that extra loan is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so this will be the money creation for, for exogenous money supply creation. Now, how do we calculate the multiplier? So if I were to ask you, say you know that the bank is doing this, okay? Um, keep on lending whenever he's got deposit and you keep on lending. Uh, you, you know the bank is doing this. So can I ask you, how much in total the bank has created in the system? All the banks are, not one bank, are first bank, second bank, third bank, fourth bank, all the banks are in the end have created out of this 1,000. Uh, how much? What is the total amount? How do you calculate? You need to calculate the multiplier. Okay? You need to cal calculate one multiplier figure and then that multiplier figure you multiply your original 1000 and that will be your total money supply created in the end. Okay? So now I'm going to teach you how to calculate that multiplier. Okay. So the simple multiplier formula is 1 divided by the reserve rate requirement, reserve ratio. Okay, the RR. So 1 divided by the reserve ratio. So in this case, the reserve ratio is how many percent? 
20%. So 1 divided by 0 0.2. Okay, so if you press your calculator, 1 divided by 0 0.2 is how much? 5 times, right? So therefore, if I were to ask you that question, how much money in the end the money supply will become? It will be 5 times 1,000. So that will be the total money supply in the end, 5 times 1,000. So the total money supply is equal to the multiplier times um, the original deposit. So it will be 5 times 1,000 equal to 5,000. Now, if my question, rephrase a little bit. What is the additional? What is the additional increase? in the money supply. So my question, if not say my question is a little bit, rephrase a little bit. What is the additional increase in the money supply? So what would the answer be? How much? The additional. 4,000, correct. Because your original is 1,000 because it. So the additional you created is 4,000. You use 5,000 minus that 1,000. Okay? So this is, it could be in the MCQ question, it's a tricky kind of a question. Minus the original 1,000 becomes 4,000. Okay? So this one is additional. The chain in the money supply. This one is the total in the money supply. That one is the change in the money supply. So then you that's why you see four thousand there money created and then plus your original one thousand become five thousand in total. Okay. So the money uh, multiplier of uh, the money multiplier you can see that is a small letter M. So it's represented by the small letter M. So the big M is the money supply. So money supply is equal to the money multiplier times the money base. And remember what's the money base? Deposit with the RBA. Correct. Money base will be the deposit with the RBA. So in the end, you will have this. Okay. So um, this is the formula. It's a simple multiplier formula. Now, suppose, suppose, uh, suppose we change the scenario a little bit, scenario number four. Scenario number four will be, if let's say, you as a depositor, right? You've got that $800. Okay, you've got the $800 as a loan. Would you want to deposit all the $800 into the bank or you want to keep aside? for your own use and then you deposit that 800 to the bank okay so normal people they would want to have a certain amount of money on their hand so that they would deposit the balance so therefore this one we call it is a uh, deposit ratio customer deposit ratio so that means the customer will actually uh, take a bit of their money on their hand and then deposit the balance okay now this is one thing so that means there's a leakage here now and another thing is that the bank itself, central bank, um, the commercial bank itself, for example, the first bank. First bank, he see that, okay, now I have 800 for me to, to lend out, right? So how about if I want to keep aside some excess reserve for my other thing, like emergency, if there's any emergency. Okay, so I want to keep aside like the excess reserve to, to, for my own personal emergency need. So therefore, you have another leakage. You have two leakages here. One leakage is that the customer, the household themselves, they will keep aside a certain amount of money and then, then they will deposit. They have deposit as a deposit ratio. Then another one is the excess ratio, whereby the bank will keep aside another certain amount of money besides the reserve ratio to, for their own emergency. Okay, so we have two linkages here. So how would that affect the multiplier? So you can see the, the formula for multiplier has changed because of these two linkages. So the calculation will be 1 plus C. C stands for the 
currency deposit ratio divided by the RR plus E plus C. So the RR stands for the required reserve deposit ratio and the E will be the excess reserve ratio plus the C. Okay, so therefore, this is the true money multiplier. The true money multiplier. Okay, so we do one numerical example, we see how does that affect the whole figure. So, so the true money multiplier is based on the fact that people do hold currency on their hand and the banks, they do hold some excess reserve on their own hand. Okay, so you, you have to recognize that these two the, um, do happen. So the banking system is limited to the amount of money that you can create. So first of all, you see, if I, if I can deposit 800, I deposit less because I want to keep some for myself. And then for the bank, if you can loan out 800, but he loan out 600 because he want to keep aside for himself. So do you see that the extra money created is even smaller than bigger? It's even smaller. So for example, over here, okay, now I got 800. I don't want to lend you 800. I will lend you 600. So that person will get 600. So with the 600 on his hand, he said, no, I don't want to um, put all the 600 into the bank. I want to keep 100 and then I want to put 500 into the bank. So from 800, because of these two linkages, it becomes 500 into the bank. And then for this 500, then you have 20% and then another excess reserve. And then you see the, the, the amount is, the money creation created is even smaller because of these two linkages. Okay. So thus, the banking system is limited to the amount of money they create because of these uh, linkages. So this is the scenario for whereby we assume that the bank Besides holding a 30% of required reserve, the bank also has 5% of excess reserve. Okay, 5%. So we see what happens. So then we have 1,000. Okay. See? 1,000, you keep aside 20% is 200. 1,000 times 5% is 50, with $50. So we have keep aside 250 and then how much loan you can make? 750. Okay, so you can make only 750 loan. So the additional increase in money supply will be 1,000 plus 750. So far, so good. Okay. Then we continue. Uh, suppose that the borrower deposit 500 in the second bank and hold 250 on their hand. Because the borrower can borrow 750 from the bank, right? So, but he don't want to put all the 750 into the bank. He said, I want to keep 250 for myself. And then the 500, then I will put into the bank. Okay, so we see what happens to the balance sheet. So this is what happens to the balance sheet, whereby instead of 750, I only put 500 only because I want to keep for myself. It's a currency reserve on the consumer side there. Then out of that 500, the bank will set aside 20% and then he will set aside 5%. Then he can only loan out the balance. Okay. So do you see that figure 360 is a much smaller figure. Okay, it's a much smaller figure. Okay, that's how the money supply is now equal to. So the money supply is now equal to uh, 360 plus the previous 1750. Okay, 360 plus 1750, the previous slide. Okay, so that's the money supply. Compared to the simple multiplier uh, method, which is the SMM. The simple multiplier will be if let's say you do not have all these linkages, you have you just stick to your twenty percent. How do you get this two hundred forty? Okay, that two hundred forty you derive that is from the simple calculation of that twenty percent required reserve. That means you do not have a currency deposit. That means the consumer do, do not keep aside money, and then the bank do not put, keep aside excess. Reserve uh, just purely the required reserve, which is 20%. So you've got 1000 plus the 800 
Okay, if the second round is uh, 6 for this, then you plus another 6 for this. So the 2440 is this one plus this one plus this one. 2440. It's a simple, simple multiplier, which means you only have 20% of required reserve, reserve ratio. You do not have that 5% uh, of excess, and then you do not have that uh, another 250 divided by 50, that amount of uh, ratio of the consumer. Uh, Ratio. Okay, currency ratio. Okay, do you know how to get this 2440? It's based on that simple multiplier theory, which is the 20% only. Whereas that 2110 is based on the, the two ligatures inside. Okay? So let's Flex your fingers a little bit. Do some calculation. Okay, if you have a mobile phone, you can use that calculator function there. So now I want you to calculate. Huh? Suppose the currency deposit ratio is 40%. Huh? That means the, the consumer, he, when he got the money, he only deposits 60%. He will keep aside 40%. Huh? That's the, how much money get. The retention ratio is high. 40% he keep aside. So the required reserve ratio is 10% and the excess reserve is uh, 0.5. Can you calculate the true money multiplier? You, you press, you key in. You, you have to practice pressing the calculator. Then you know how to do. You use 1 plus 0.4, right? Divided by 1. Uh, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus the 0 0.5 excess ratio. 0 0.5 excess ratio. So do all of you get 2.77? The multiplier, the true money multiplier is 2.77. Who didn't get 2.77? Who didn't get? All of you get 2.77. Make sure you know how to calculate them. This one, I think, should come out. Should come out in the end of the So, if let's say the C and the E, uh, which is like two ligatures, uh, the C and the E uh, is zero. Uh, you just only have the required reserve ratio. Uh, what could have been the multiplier? What could have been the simple multiplier? B, 1 divided by 0 0.1, which is 10 times, which is this 10 times. 10. So we are comparing, comparing 10 with 2.77. Do you see such a big difference? With that two linkages, your money multiplier becomes 2.77. And then your simple money multiplier is 10 times. Do you see a big difference because of that two linkages? Okay, so that's why um, when you calculate, you have to you have to see clearly whether it's a simple money multiplier. They ask you to calculate simple money multiplier, or they ask you to calculate the true money multiplier. You have to be careful. Okay, this two the formula is a bit different. The answer is different as well. This part you understand or not? The multiplier. Example two. Suppose your C is twenty five percent. That means your customer they want to keep aside twenty five percent, and then he will put the rest twenty five percent into the deposit as the bank deposit. Okay. And the excess reserve ratio is uh, zero point one percent, and the RR required reserve ratio is uh, ten percent. Compute the true money multiplier. True money multiplier. You press the calculator, see whether you can get 3.56 or not. You press. If you do not get, you have to raise your hand already. Or you have to see your friend's answer. Ask your friend beside you how to calculate. You get 3.55. Now, suppose the central bank decides to increase 
the RR to 20%, you want to put aside more money now. So even without calculating, uh, so you imagine if you want to keep aside more reserve, uh, what will happen to the multiplier answer? Bigger or smaller if you keep aside more money? Smaller, right? Okay, so if you press the calculator, you see the answer is smaller, 2.77. So it means what? When you have keep aside more money, that means you break less money. You break less money into the system. So the true money multiplier and the money